down the bitch gang. Yay. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs. Where is the thing? You can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buckley said, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor playing. Got an all band. Y'all seen the block. Stop the one hand. And Pat, we trust. It's power, have the guts. We're here to bring the heat. Y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. Welcome back to Five on the Floor. I'm your host, Greg Sylvander. Today's floor plan with me, Alex Toledo. You can follow him on Twitter at Tropical Blanket and Brady Hawk. You can follow him on Twitter at Brady Hawk 305. And if you hear dogs barking in the background, that's okay too. That Those are mine. Uh, I'm Greg Sylvander. We are going to dive into the Miami Heat and what has become in this five-game losing streak. I'm going to go out on a limb, y'all, and I'm going to say the worst five game stretch in the last five years. We're going to dissect that and see if, if that hot take is hot enough before we do though, want to tell you about a great sponsor of the five reasons sports sports network. And want to tell you about uh, a really cool watch party we have coming up tomorrow or Saturday. If you're hearing, if you're listening to this first though, tub culture, Sports fans, are you looking to do something nice for your girlfriend or wife? You have a great local business right here in South Florida that can help. They're called Tub Culture. They can make bath, body products, everything from bath bombs, shower steamers, to soaps and lotions. Now, you might not know what all that stuff is, but she does and she'll love them. All the products are handmade using gentle, natural ingredients with no animal testing. While you're at it, you might want to buy some soap for yourself. She doesn't want you smelling like sweat and beer. Use promo code five and get 10% off your order of 20 bucks or more at Tub Culture. That's shoptubculture.com. Alex, tell them about the watch party coming up against the Knicks. All right. So tomorrow we are once again going to be back at the Rock Esports Center for our third watch party in 2K tournament of the season. The first two were real fun, and we're excited about this one because – um, not only are we doing it for the 3 p.m. game, it's on a Saturday. I feel like it's just easier for people to get down there um, and really enjoy the whole experience and really make a day out of it because the, the game starts at 3. We're going to watch the game there. There's going to be food, drinks, snacks. All of that is going to be there, a food truck. Um, and after the game is going to be the 2K tournament. And I think either as the 2K tournament is starting or, before, or right before it starts, we're going to be doing – something for the podcast with um, Ethan's going to be there. I think my guy Brady's going to be there. And I think we're going to do uh, a quick hitting podcast there. Um, not a hundred percent sure if that's the case, but you know what? Screw it. I'm saying it right now. Live show tomorrow at rock. Ethan's going to have to do it because he didn't show up the first time and we haven't been able to do a live show. Like we promised rock. So screw it. We're doing it tomorrow. <laughs> screw it. We're doing it live, but no, in, in all reality, um, I think it's going to be a good time and everybody should come out there. The tournament will start at six. Um, Ethan has, I, I got Ethan to put some money down on top of the, 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 the cash prizes that, that go into, um, that come, sorry, that come from the entry fee. Sorry, I'm not a salesman, but, uh, so you got the cash prizes on top for first place. And then in second place, you either, you can win better edge or prize picks funds. And you know what? Like, we're just trying to make it a little bit spicier for you guys. The last person won, I believe, $100 or $90, if I remember correctly. We're going to add on top of that and just trying to get people to come out. So make sure to come out tomorrow. Rock Esports Center down in Palmetto Bay. Game starts at 3. Not, you don't have to pay anything to come hang out with us and watch the game. Of course, like I said, food, drinks, and snacks will be sold. And if you want to enter the 2K tournament, it's a $15 entry fee. And you can win money. So come out tomorrow and... Try to see if you can keep me from winning first place because I'm going to be aiming for that. That sounds like a hell of a good time. What has not been a hell of a good time is the Miami Heat basketball that we have had to watch over the last five games. They're on a five-game losing streak. Uh, not only have they lost to the dregs of the league with nobody playing that anybody can recognize in the Memphis Grizzlies, but also have gotten waxed by the best team in the league in the Boston Celtics. And it hasn't looked good either way, but we are a solution minded show. And we are coming here today to try to figure out what the hell can we potentially suggest as fixes 
Um, I think that the easy thing to say is they need to make a trade. Jimmy Butler needs to play better. We need to be healthy. So we weren't allowed to bring those things to the show because those are the obvious things. But yes, all those things need to happen. They need to play better. Jimmy needs to play better. We need to see the big three uh, in Tyler Hero, Bam Adebayo, and Jimmy Butler on the floor more together playing cohesively. But we want to find some other things. I have a few ideas. But before we dive into the solutions, I want to ask either of you. I started the show by saying that this is the worst five-game streak, worst five-game stretch in the last five years. So that's during the Jimmy Butler era. This has been the most listless without disposition. So disposition-less Miami Heat group I have seen over the last five games. Do either of you agree, disagree, or can you think of any other time where we maybe felt this grim? The only one that that compares to it is two years ago when they had the Spo and Jimmy fight and everything went off the rails. Like that's the only one. But as I looked at a little bit ago, that was only a four game losing streak. So maybe you're right on the five game span. If we, if we put that specifics around it. Uh, But after that four game losing streak to finish the season, they ended up putting six in a row there and ended up figuring out solutions. But that the the last game of that losing streak wasn't the fight. It was like the second game. And then they lost two more on top of that, where it felt like everything was going downhill at that point. It felt like everything was off. But I think the big thing, the question is now, do you feel more comfortable about the vibes when it's being, kind of in that altercation state where they're addressing it and going at each other about the problems? Or do you feel better about it when it's the way it is right now, where it's everybody's kind of looking around like, okay, what do we do? So it's like, I think that's the question right now to answer your question is what do you feel is the worst part to be in? So, I mean, we always are going to say they're going to figure it out in some capacity because they're not just going to throw their hands up ultimately. But I think those they've dealt with it. These two, Losing streaks have been in two totally different fashions. A- Alex, what would you rather be? The team that's clashing because you're bumping heads or the team that's looking around everybody like, what the hell are we going to do? Like, what what spot is? Is there a better spot to be in out of those two? I think there is. And if you're just talking about the way the Heat talk about themselves, it feels like they would probably much prefer the former right where two seasons ago when they were out there and Jimmy and Spo and UD <laughs> almost got into a fight and, and all that stuff like I think they like that better they've always talked about how oh that happens all behind the scenes all the time guys are holding each other accountable it's nothing personal and all that type of stuff whereas like that was not really the vibes that we felt last night uh in the locker room and of course that's not representative of the team because we're there way after everything is done and you know, there's maybe one or two guys in there when we're in there. So we're not getting a, a complete vibe of the team altogether. But like, man, just and we were talking about this pre-show, just seeing Jimmy there sitting down at his locker and, and the vibes that were coming off from that presser, man. He, You could tell he was he's kind of just as done with it as everybody. And I don't mean done with it like he wants out of here. I just mean like he, he's frustrated. He, he's frustrated and, it, and it's not coming out in the same way it did a couple of seasons ago. And I I think I prefer that. I think I prefer that instead of guys, Mm -hmm. everybody just kind of down on themselves and being like, oh, we don't know what to do. We've got to be better and trying to say the right things. I got to say, I'd rather I like the the fieriness of the former better. Yeah, I I think they actually wouldn't lie to you and they probably would admit that that's where they'd like to get to as well. It's going to take somebody getting good and mad before (laughs) things start to turn around at all. Um. We are going to dive into the solutions that we've brought to the show because sometimes it's the simple things that can get things started and you never know what flips a season, right? So we're going to dive into our ideas. Before we do, want to tell you about a great sponsor of the Five Reasons Sports Network, and that is Better Edge. Why is Better Edge different? It's the stock exchange for sports betting. Instead of betting against the house, you are betting against other people playing on the platform. So what better edge does is help connect you on the other side of the bets you're already looking for. So you get peer to peer betting happening. You need to use the code five RSN. That'll give you $20 to a free play right off the bat. Five RSN. That's that code better edge, the stock exchange for sports betting. This is web-based platform. It's super fun to play. Uh, it is legal in most States no offshore stuff here. This is better edge. Go to betteredge.com. 
Use the code 5RSN for 20 bucks in free play. Brady, you're the smart one here. Give us a solution that's going to help turn this damn team around in the last five games. Man, I mean, I, I when you posed the question before about like what can shift, can save the season, the thing that comes to mind, and I know we've been saying it as a joke kind of over the last few weeks, but it's Jaime Hawkins to me. And, and there's a couple different reasons why. Number one, for the basketball reasons, like I think he really does make everything kind of come together as the as the glue piece, which it is so wild to say that the rookie that we did not have being in the rotation before the season is the glue to all of their top players working together. Uh, but it feels like that's the case. Number one, the, the offensive stuff with – we talked about the lack of movement. We talked about the lack of rim pressure. All of these things that he provides, the off-ball stuff, the cutting – uh, just kind of opens up for opportunities. He can get to the rim at any point from at different spots on the floor. You look at the stuff that they're running, even aside from the Terry Rozier era where they're kind of trying to figure this stuff out, it's been a whole lot of pick and rolls that don't go a lot in a kind of a positive direction. Whereas when we saw from the Jaime Hawkins stuff, it was like different things. It wasn't just strict pick and roll into pull-ups into the same action every time. It was like, okay, Hawkins is going to get the ball in the mid post and do a couple spins and find his way into the paint and then throw a couple jabs. Like he finds different ways of, of operating on the floor that just gives them a different look offensively. Then you go to the stuff in terms of just the stuff that Eric Spolster mentions, like a, a key phrase, functional size. He has functional size that he, yeah, he could play at the four. He could play at the three. He could play at the two. They, I think that there was a starting lineup earlier in the season where they had him at the one. So they have a guy that can kind of play in different spots of the floor offensively and defensively because as much as we're talking about the offense if we're really because I know defense is, is kind of a, a perspective thing but I wouldn't be it's not crazy to say he was he's been a top three or top four defender on this heat team this season oh, and I, I agree. it's not crazy to say at all so they need that right now they need him in that spot to kind of give them a little bit more physicality I feel like they lack that right now and here's the biggest thing because we just spent the beginning of this podcast talking about the vibes in the locker room and Jimmy was talking about the energy last night when I asked him about it he said he didn't know like what the first step is to fixing the energy. Well, if there was an answer to the vibes and the energy, it's Jaime Akis. Like it, it just from the fan base, from that arena, from his teammates, he is a like a walking energizer on the basketball court with the stuff he can do, uh, you know, the, the fun stuff on the fast break or the fun stuff in the half court with the spins and just the, the it's pretty much Tyler in his rookie year because I, I, I how explosive he was and exciting he was. And we're reliving that now with Jaime Akis, that, that they need to lean into that. So when you ask about saving the season or, or, or kind of finding a different look, they're going to have to lean into that guy a lot more. And it's it's hard to say that in a way because you're trying to figure out, okay, well, Jimmy's going to need to get his usage up and, and where Tyler and Bam and Rozier are going to get their shots in the mix. Like, yeah, that's stuff to figure out. But I think Jaime making him a priority, and I'm not saying on the ball, just making him a priority on this team when he comes back, is going to just help a lot of things. So I'm interested to see that the lineups he's used in, I know we're all interested to see that the main lineup, the like the Rozier hero, Jimmy Hawk is bam lineup. I'm just very curious to see how that looks on both ends of the floor, but I think he can energize this team for sure. He definitely is a lightning rod, a lightning rod in the arena to your point on the road, other players notice, but you know who else has been, uh, a shot in the arm for the team. And I've just seen it from the fans, Alex, Terry Rogier, just him coming and playing. We had a hundred people on playback watching the other night in his debut, even though it was against the lowly Memphis Grizzlies and the heat looked awful. We still had a hundred people watching the game with us. We've had more people checking in with Terry Rogier since he's arrived. It, to me, I agree with Brady. There's something to this idea of you're going to need some fresh energy from these new guys what else do you see out there that you think maybe uh, could help turn this thing around in this five game skid? Um, before I get into that, completely agree with Brady about Hawkins. Like, I, it's unbelievable how much they miss that guy. And I've been trying to make this a thing. I don't know if it's going to catch on, but I've been calling him the Band Aid recently <laughs> because he's really been just like, like everything felt like it was okay while he was playing. Right, he was giving you his boost of energy and really filling in like for stuff that they needed and now like without him and look kevin love is a part of this too he's they the times he's been out and now again with um him getting sick like they missing both of those guys it's it's a lot it's a lot to deal with and 
yeah, I think Hake is having him back. And he, him and Duncan are their best off-ball movers. And I think those are the two guys that can fit best around um, kind of their better players and kind of make the offense move a little bit. I just think they need more of that. They need more of that off-ball movement and the way that he does it with so much force, great timing, all the stuff we talked about forever, the rim pressure on and off ball, they, they miss it badly. They miss it really badly. And obviously he's an extra wing body on the defensive end who's pretty good there. So, yeah, having Hawkins back is going to be huge. And Caleb to um, a somewhat lesser extent because he's been great. Um, back to Rozier. I, I'm not going to fault Spo too much for this um, because obviously he got thrown into a back-to-back, -back, had uh, played the night before he got traded, if I have the timeline right. So three games and four nights, got traded in the middle of it. I'm not going to fault Spo too much for not involving him more, but I need to see that. I need to see Terry Rozier involved more. And I'm not saying, you know, he hasn't been trying to be involved. Like, he he's doing what's being asked of him. They've used him as a screener. They have him moving around a lot off ball. The problem is there's been a lot of hesit hesitancy. And I feel like, um, you know, that's to be expected from a guy who's trying to fit into a team that already has their core set up. They're not bringing him in here to be like the number one ball dominant guy. So it's kind of a ton of and we talked about this when they traded for him. It's a tough balance um, to try to come in right away and play your game where he was a ball dominant guy in, in Charlotte. And you're kind of like you can be the third or fourth option sometimes in that starting lineup when you're just looking at like the names and that. I think it's a little bit tougher with that starting lineup, and that's why I want to see them keep kind of playing through it and, and, and figuring, each, figuring each other out. I like the way that him and Tyler kind of pass the ball between each other. It hasn't been great yet because I think he's deferring to Tyler a little bit, and uh, but, but I like the way that they're going about it. It's just Terry, uh, I feel like he's been very up and down, right? Like he's had some – the missed finishes at the rim, which is fine because he can get there at will, and he's the only guy on this team who can really just get by – his guy and you see that so i i would like to see him involved more and more pick and roll action but the problem is with the starting lineup is you get into similar issues when tyler and bam are running the pick and roll is the spacing isn't always great and then maybe the pocket pass to the contested mid range is all that's available so i want to see him used more often and, and kind of involved more often but i also need terry to be aggressive uh when he does get the ball and he hasn't had a great performance yet and they're losing the minutes by a whole lot i'm not even going to get into the numbers because it's such a tiny sample but uh it, it hasn't worked out so far which is somewhat to be expected but now in, in this time you know with a day off um before the next game they, they need to drill down because they need what that guy brings they don't need him to come here and just fit in so like it's cool that he doesn't want to step on anybody's toes and all that and doesn't think that he's going to be the number one that's all fine and great he wants to buy in and be a part of a winning situation and all that they need him to play his game. They need him to get into the rim and make plays. And I, I, that's another thing I felt really good about is he, he's been more than willing to pass the ball. Like that reputation of being like a Jordan Clarkson type bucket getter, it's just absolutely not true. The guy is a point guard, and I think he 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 is always looking to get others involved. And specifically when I want to see him more involved and more on ball is in those lineups that he's been thrown in with no Tyler and no Jimmy. That is the time where I need to see – on yeah. ball dominant Terry Rozier. Like, I'm sorry. Like, there was that stretch uh, yesterday in the second half when, like, Duncan and Caleb were, like, trying to make something out of nothing on the uh, on kind of east-west action. And it's like Terry got the ball with, like, less than seven seconds left in the shot clock. No Tyler or Jimmy in that lineup. Why is he touching the ball so late? And that's just one example, of course. But I really do think it. he just needs to. Uh, he, he's going to figure his way out. He's going to figure out the way that these guys like to play and where they like to get their shots. And he's going to have to find his way. And I really do think in those lineups, he's got to be like, he's got to be aggressive. And I understand why he's trying to fit in with the starters, but they need him to shoot. They need him to shoot those threes because he's a good movement shooter. Um, they need him to shoot the pull-up threes. They need him to run pick and roll and get into the paint and create out of that. Like I, they need all that stuff from him. So I don't, I don't want him, you know, trying to scale down his game too much. And that's really what I think it comes down to. And obviously, Spo involving him more now that there's going to be more time to practice and get into film. Let's hope so. And I agree wholeheartedly with both of you. It's crazy that we've arrived at a place where Jaime Jaquez Jr. and Terry Rozier III are the two guys that uh, we are relying on to find answers because we've basically arrived at a place where we've thrown our hands up and there's no more excuses. Bam is out there. Jimmy is out there. Tyler's out there. You have your full cast of characters 
against New York. It appears as if Kevin Love and Jaime Jaquez Jr. will both be available. You have everybody. There's no excuses now. And for me, this boils down to watching the hustle stats. This team needs to start giving a shit. I pulled some examples of just this is data points that are super basic hustle stats. You can find them on NBA.com under the team stats. You you guys know I won't go digging for data because I do too much of this in my daily life. Hustle stats. Follow me here. Charges drawn this year. They are eighth in the league. That's usually a stat that they're really, really um that they flourish in. They were second last year and they were first in 2022. They're eighth this year in charges drawn deflections 19th this year. They were eighth last year, 15th in 2022. They went from 19th to eighth in deflections. Listen to that screen assist 19th this year, 10th last year, ninth in 2022. And lastly, contested three-point shots. That's just total contested three-point shots. They're 24th in the league this year. They were 13th last year, 4th in 2022. Those are four data points that, to me, add up to a team that's not playing hard enough. They need to play harder. They need to act like they give a shit. Now is the moment because you're going to start to separate yourself where you're not in the four or five conversation. You're in the six, seven, eight conversation. You're trying to get out of the play in. And what the hell are we really doing here? Is that where we're landing? So to me, that's what we need to watch for. And the beautiful part that wraps a bow around all this is that Terry Rogier is a guy that wants to fit in. He cares about making you know, getting this right. And Jaime Hawkes from day one has been all about that. So I think we've kind of honed in on two guys that can help change gears for this team. And we want to thank our sponsors, Tub Culture, as well as Better Edge. Make sure you come out to Rocky Sports Center for the super uh, dope 2K tournament, as well as watching Heat at Knicks at three o'clock. Free to enter. All you spectators, you can come out there and check out the game. You don't have to spend a dollar Come and check out the Road Raid at Rocky Sports. Thank you for joining us, Alex Brady. Thank you. Uh, we will have Ethan back with us shortly. He's still moving. Peace out.